is we've now passed the non-spoiler part of the episode. This is now my honest review of the film, my honest opinion of the film. And it is still that it's a great film. I'm going to stand by that. And I have already heard mixed reviews on it. I know the critics, what, Rotten Tomatoes is like a 40-something percent. That That's wrong. That's wrong. Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. I think it was a really, really good idea to have 99% of the film in the quantum realm. It really made it that the entire thing was about that. And I feel like having more of Scott and, and Cassie and everyone in the surface world, in not well, basically just not in the quantum realm, just living the normal lives, which it was cool to see. But though that five, ten minutes at the start, that's all you needed. We got a little bit of it at the end, and that's all we needed because it would have been lost anything else it would have it would have uh, made the stuff in the quantum realm shorter more rushed and things like that you know i feel like that's what um a lot of the criticism with love and thunder was as well it was rushed you know because there was too much too much going on that wasn't that wasn't going towards the main point of the film the main focus the the conclusion of the film whereas quantum realm you was in the quantum realm but in, in quantum mania you was in the quantum realm start to finish pretty much and, and what, what was also really good about that is a lot of the trailer footage was from outside of the quantum realm. Not all of it, don't get me wrong, there, there, was, there was a lot of it that was in the quantum realm, but the stuff that was out of the quantum realm, it pretty much got it all of the way with in the first 10 minutes, which is really good because then it's like, oh, well, there's so much then that the trailers didn't show. I do think the plot points that I was on about before that it kind of lacked is a death. I feel like it needed a death. A, a really good introduction with Kang, and I've said this before, I think I've said it on the podcast before, um, is that he, if he killed Ant-Man, like, what an introduction to Kang. I know we've had He Who Remains, but he was more of, like, a relaxed, goofy, funny guy. Um, but Kang, this is Kang the Conqueror now, and we didn't see him kill anyone in the main cast. I feel like Ant-Man should have gone, or this is one that I think would have worked a bit better, Hank Pym should have gone, because at the end of the day, I don't think he's got much left to serve in Marvel. I feel like he's he's done his day like as, as a character. I mean, Michael Douglas is a great actor, but I feel like he's served his time now. Um, you know, he's 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 got the pin particles. Um, Hope has pretty much taken over. Where is it now? Hope Hope Pym Productions or some, something like that. They, they said it in the film, the new company name and everything. Um, you know, she's basically curing the world. And uh, so, yeah, Hank Pym is pretty much now retired as a character. Um, and he's just chilling and he's finally got his wife back, which is why I think his death would have been absolutely amazing. He, he's, his wife was being closed off about the quantum realm because she knew that it was dangerous. He, well, kind of listened, but he also went behind her back to help Cassie. Ends up in the quantum realm, so it's his fault. Ha, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Janet tried to warn him. Hank didn't listen. Goes in, ends up dying because of Kang. Sets up Kang as an amazing villain. Hank's just got his wife back and then... Now he's gone, so that's that's a, also a bit more of a character arc for Hope as well, and also Janet if you wanted to throw her in it a little bit more. Um, yeah, I do feel like a death was lacked. I also think um, that Hank's character lacked character in this film. To be honest, he barely did anything. He, he made a pizza big, and he got a bit annoyed because his wife slept with someone else in the quantum realm when she was down there for thirty years, um, which was I just feel like that was a bit of a throwaway line because then. His character um, wasn't even in it for that long. So I feel like that was literally put in to give Hank a bit of character development in the film. And it kind of just went and went a bit flat on it. Um, but it is what it is. So I feel like, uh, you know, having his character die, having him a little bit more involved in the film. Um, I mean, he had the cool thing with the ants, which was, it was really cool. But that's pretty much all it was. So what else? What else? Kang exiled by... The Council of Kangs. That I think that was a really good decision. I'll tell you before that was revealed. I'll tell you what I thought was going on in the film because I was wrong. Um, but I also think that would have been pretty cool. But this, this I do think is, is really, really good, especially with the post credits, which I'll get onto in a little bit. I also thought it was really cool when Kang was doing the broadcast when he was trying to launch his ship uh, and his and like his chair and his army and everything. He's trying to get out of there uh, and he's doing that broadcast to everyone. He said that we're going to put an end to the Kang Dynasty. So obviously he wants to rid everyone else and all the other timelines. And then he wants one timeline. Oh, what, what did they call it in Loki? The the Supreme Timeline or something like that. The the only like the only timeline or whatever they called it, but that's what he that was his goal, that's what he wanted to do. Which is why 
that I thought that the Kang we saw in Quantumania was He Who Remains. So I thought it was going to be at the end of this film, Kang ends up winning. And then that's how then he gets into the, the like that castle at the end of time behind um, Elias. You know, He Who Remains, like Cloud of Fog. Um, and I feel like he, I, what I thought was going on was Quantumania, Kang, so Kang the Conqueror, was going to win in this film set up that one one singular timeline and then that then goes back to Loki where Loki and Sylvie then well Sylvie kills he who remains and then that then disrupts the flow of time yeah I wasn't right I was not right on that one um but I like I also I also thought that would have been pretty cool um I mean it, it kind of still can happen um and I'm I'm gonna go jump back to that one I've got a lot of tabs open at the moment I'll circle back to it um, when I get on to what I think the future of the MCU is going to look like. Uh, but I also thought that this film was going to be set, as, as the film was going on, I thought that it was actually set at a midpoint in Avengers 5. So I thought when he said he was sent down here and he was exiled down here, I thought it was going to be from the Avengers. So I thought the Avengers was going to, their first solution, maybe at the end of Avengers 5, was going to be, right, how do we trap this guy somewhere that he can't get out of? We send him down to the quantum realm and, like you know, remove everything in his power to get back out, uh, which I thought made sense until it didn't make sense. Uh, but yeah, I still thought that would have been pretty cool because then he could have come back in Avengers six, and you know, yeah. But is he dead? Is he dead? Is he dead? I don't know. I don't know. I heard, I heard some people say that he. Might have just been like shrunk down, but yeah, I mean, they also like blew him up a little bit. But he's in that point where Scott had like loads of different variants of him, he was just surrounded by all of his possibilities. Um, and then maybe he then absorbs all of them somehow. I don't know, this is this is just someone that something that someone threw out there. Um, and then that's that's how he gets even, even bigger and even better in Avengers 6, uh, which would be Secret Wars. So that'd be quite cool. So maybe in Avengers 5, that's the solution that Ant-Man's going to give, though, that we need... Uh, well, it could be Ant-Man or Loki, really, that we need one Kang at the at, at, at that castle after um, Elias and at the end of time, and we have him sitting in and we maintain one timeline. But then, obviously, that goes back on like the mass genocide of killing trillions and all that. Um, but it, it, someone's got to suggest it at, at some point to... So if they if they know that there's other universes as well that are, that are probably there's infinite possibilities so there's definitely other universes thinking the same thing that are dealing with the same problem right at that exact time and dealing with Kang if they decide that they want their universe and their flow of time their timeline to be the the one the supreme one whatever it is then you know it's competition then but that's then how you're going to get incursions it's, it's, listen there's so much to look forward to in this and it's got me really really excited about it but my opinion on the ending of the film okay so that